Hi, and welcome to this week's weekly update. Overcrowding in jails has been an issue throughout counties in Idaho for a number of years, most notably in Canyon County. But Kootenai County faces a similar problem as it has been forced to house inmates outside of the county since 2006. Because of this, county commissioners heard a presentation from Rocky Mountain Corrections about what would be involved in constructing a new jail with private dollars. One commissioner said that if the company could build the facility and house inmates for less than what the county could do it for, the plan would have to be looked at seriously. The county would have to lease the building and operate it as well. So far, 3,000 inmates have been moved to other jails in Idaho, Montana, and Washington. The total cost for moving those inmates? $2.4 million. The Idaho Legislature's Health Care Task Force, one of three task forces looking into Obamacare in Idaho, met this week to discuss the state's Medicaid program and indigent services. The federal government's dollars to cover the Medicaid expansion only apply to the actual expansion of the program, not the administrative costs and the federal medical assistance percentage, according to Grace Marie Turner, president of the Galen Institute. Senator Dean Cameron acknowledged the uncertainty of costs moving forward, saying, the fear I have is that we'll have the short-term savings and that will get spent in one form or another someplace else. And then 10 years, 20 years from now, not us, but colleagues of ours will be sitting around the table trying to figure out how to pay for it. Though the federal government says it will pay for Medicaid expansion for the first couple of years, followed by a 90% subsidy for an additional three years, one thing from the meeting was clear. Nobody is quite sure how much money the state will have to spend or how exactly they will pay for it. Governor Butch Otter's task force on the possible implementation of a state health exchange met this week as well. Presentations from exchange supporters were heard by the task force, with very few of the members raising many concerns. However, as is the case with most aspects of implementing Obamacare, specifics are still an issue. Cost remains high on the list of concerns, as nobody truly knows how much money will cost the state. And regulations and rules of the law are not set in stone yet either. Paul Diogardi, director of the Office of Intergovernmental and External Affairs at Health and Human Services, said most of the rules and regulations for the exchanges are finalized and well known, but could not say what the future will hold. One thing was clear though, Idaho will, will not meet the January 1st, 2013 deadline by which a state readiness assessment is required. Finally this week, the SATs. More specifically, the fact that the state of Idaho now requires all high school juniors to take the test. Last year was the first year of the program and saw 17,000 juniors take the test. When it was voluntary, just 2,800 juniors elected to do so. The requirement was passed in 2007 by the legislature, which allocated funds for the program at a cost of nearly $1 million per year. Juniors can opt not to take the SATs, but must take a standardized test such as the ACTs to replace it, which they have to pay for themselves. The results showed that just one out of every four met college and career ready requ requirements. The average score for Idaho juniors was 448 in critical reading, 454 in math, and 447 in writing. A score of 500 in each category is the benchmark that has shown a student will be successful in post-secondary education after high school, according to the College Board. So, should the state be requiring and paying for this? Melissa McGrath, Communications Director for the State Education Department, said yes. We know that if students are going to be successful in life after high school in the 21st century, they're going to need some education after high school. So, it's our responsibility to make sure that students graduate from high school prepared for that, she said. Stay up to date with important policy news around the state by visiting our website, liking us on Facebook, or following us on Twitter at Idaho Reporter. That's it for this week's weekly update. Thank you for watching, and have a great weekend.